What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Hype Report. Um, I hope you are well. Um, yeah, today we've got a very fun guest, someone who I wanted to have on for a long time. He's very big in the sneaker space. He's been doing the uh, the most on the resale scene. Ryan, how are you, bro? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on, Jay. No, all good, man, all good. Tell, tell the people who don't know you a little about yourself and what you do in this space. So I'm Ryan. I have a store in Soho, London Sneaker Club, and I guess I've built like a persona kind of separately to the store where I've sold and bought very expensive shoes, mainly SBs. Shoes. And I think the first video I created, I, I just did it. I don't even know why I did it. I was, it was intended on being a day in the life and I was going to buy a load of shoes and the video did relatively well. And I thought maybe I should just film other videos similar to this and then they all kind of popped off so yeah man i mean going back to the just some very expensive shoes i mean they're not just expensive shoes they're very premium <laughs> yeah. premium shoes i mean i i was looking through your page this morning or, or just like a bit a bit a bit about your background and i was looking at the futura dunks last year 130k that was a crazy shoe i mean that that's insane isn't it right because they they what like 10 of them in the world or something like that wow that's an interesting question. I believe there was there was either six or eight. They were sold by the Sotheby's auction. And yes. then semi-recently, a lot of pairs were seeded out. Ah, uh, okay. So there's more on the market now, which I don't know what that's done to the value of them. Yeah, because I, I remember watching a vid and you you were like, you, I can't show the box label. Yeah, because I didn't want, obviously yeah. people are replicating it or something yeah, like that, I, I imagine. I didn't want to do it because that shoe had never been seen before. And the label was different to it was different to a sample label. It was different to obviously a normal label. So I just thought I best not show it just in case. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it was. was they they dropped shoot. in. They had had the UNC colorway, the orange and blue, didn't they? Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful. They shoot. were really cool. I yeah. remember when they were when they were teasing them, and we were making some content about them, and they always, always did loads of good numbers because everyone wanted the shoe so bad. What talking about? Um, that kind of value of shoe. Is that one of the most expensive pairs you've ever sold? I, th I think I've sold two at that value. One even more expensive that I actually wasn't, I didn't even make a TikTok out of it. I wasn't even allowed to. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can you can you just say what shoe it was or not? I can tell you why I can't make a video out of it. Yep. yep. Um, the shoe was a, a, another very rare shoe. There were 24 made. So with that, you kind of, everyone in the industry kind of knows who the owners are roughly. Okay. And they yeah. know if a, one pair might have been worn by a certain celebrity. And I bought a pair off someone and then sold it on. But the person I bought it from, for whatever reason, I don't know, but he asked me to keep it totally private. Mm. Um, I think with the, the size that he had, I think there was only other one in that size and the, the other owner was quite a famous person that has famously worn the shoe and he didn't want it to be known that he had sold his pair. Got so it, I yeah. then Got couldn't it, yeah. make any content out of that particular shoe, which is crazy because it's a yeah. shoe I've always wanted to make content out of and I wasn't even allowed. It must be so frustrating, man. It's so frustrating, like just sat on such, because you know that video will probably bang and it's such a cool story and cool shoe. And Yeah, I, I made the content and then he was like, listen, I need you to not, not mention this. Yeah, and I guess when there's that amount of value involved, you can't really be like, <laughs> no, yeah, you have, you have yeah, to. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, right. yeah, it was that. What? What? Um, is there been any? Can you tell us any celebrities you've sold to, or any maybe high-profile clients? Um, or has that got to be kept a little bit more low-key? So what I found is it's very rare. Well, for me anyway, I know that celebrities and whatnot are buying these kind of shoes, but for me, they're not spending the same money that a private individual. Yeah, is on yeah, shoes, yeah, yeah. and I don't, I don't know if it's because they don't see the value, which, which other people do. Because I would say that anyone that's buying these expensive shoes is of is an investor of some kind. They're seeing the value increasing over the last few years, and they're and they're normally buying it to put in a collection. And those guys are normally the kind of guys that. Also buy art, they buy vintage cars. Yes, yes. It's, it's interesting you say that because it's, it's exactly what Sneaker Den said. Yeah. Um, when he came, obviously you guys do quite similar stuff. Um, and it was interesting. And I was always, because I, I, I don't know why. I mean, 
I was always like, oh, the rapper's obviously going to spend the most amount of shoes. But he was like, nah, like, no. They might spend like five, six, seven K yeah. on a pair, but then they don't do any more because it is shoes nowadays are, well, they can be an investment piece and they are effective. They move like art to a degree, yeah. I guess, which is crazy. Exactly that. What, what do you think of the sneaker space at the moment? Because it is always changing, but I feel over the last six months, it's really changed like quite heavily, uh, especially from, of, especially what kind of influential well, influencers and fashion influencers are actually wearing. I feel like there's been a the change from sneakers to much more, oh, maybe a different type of silhouettes and away from that kind of sporty sneakers that we've seen, that we used to see back, well, a couple of years ago trending. I think you're totally right. It's completely changed. I think more people are now opting for sort of higher end shoes. Margellas, even the Laura Pianas, people are wearing those types of shoes. And even your, your kind of active wear, like Solomon's and stuff, more people are wearing those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's kind of coincided with a time whereby there's not that many limited releases that Nike have pushed out there. So there's nothing out there that's particularly hard to get from a store. So I think people are just trying to change it up change it up a little bit and wear something different yeah i feel i feel that a lot a, uh, a lot of people have gone to a lot more kind of timeless silhouettes and shoes like timberlands and boots and that yeah. kind of workwear stuff i mean that's re bro i mean it's changed from people rocking like last year or maybe like 18 months ago from people like desperate for sbs and jordan fours and still the jordan one hype at the time to now all the cool kids are rocking Timberlands and yeah. boots and workwear boots and stuff like that. It's crazy. It's totally such a changed. such a bizarre bizarre change. Is that is that impacted the the market? Like, because there's been a lot made of is sneaker reselling dead or where's reselling now? Yeah, it has. I think there's two sides of what I do. Whereas I have the store in Soho, which is people coming in to buy your everyday shoes, your your Dunks, your Jordan Fours, Jordan Ones, and there's less of that. But the shoes that I would class almost like an asset class, which are maybe 15, 20 year old SBs, they're still selling. They're still increasing in value. Mm. Um, so they're still selling. But yeah, the other side is is definitely changing. It, it, I guess it's probably impossible to predict, but Will, are you quite confident that that SB or those those more older pairs that are not going to get released any time, like again, that's still going to go up in value. You, you reckon that's going to be the case? I think so. They're very, they're very classic. They're very, they don't have an, they don't have an air unit, so they're not crumbling like other shoes would in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've got these shoes that are say in excess of twenty years old, that are still going for very big sums of money and increasing year on year. So I don't, I don't really see that slowing down. My, my opinion, I think more people are asking me about those types of shoes that weren't last year. Um, I had someone recently that he collects, he collects watches and vintage cars. And he had just sold his company and he kind of, I guess he's probably bought every car and every watch he wants. Mm. And he wanted to diversify and have money in other things. So he asked me to recommend him a list of a group of shoes for a £20,000 budget. He said, what can I put my money into? Wow. Um, and it, it was good because he just asked me to recommend what I think. He came with a load of shoes that he liked. Um, but I said, look, I think go with these ones. And I've seen these particular deals, which are really good. And I would put my money there. And he was like, yeah, let's go with it. So... Yeah, he spent twenty thousand on a few pairs of shoes last week. It's, it's that's crazy, man. I guess like that, like that amount of number, that amount of like value in a number, or just that number in general, is just mental. That it's been thrown around so casually on on kicks. A lot of people just won't get that. It's, I mean, they're all. It's just, it's just a Nike shoe at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of a crazy thing to understand that that shoe was once priced at sixty, ninety dollars, and it's now going for thousands yeah because that's like obviously right the the high end of the scale man like my my parents uh, i mean i don't i don't invest in kicks at all i just buy like for personal like personal collections and stuff and for a lot for content but my parents haven't got a clue like if yeah. i tell them i was like oh, i got a really good deal on this 
like like I bought like the like the, the green SB dunks I bought a few guys the other day. I got a Moses. I was like, bro, I might buy these. And the the store, well, the guy who works in your store with you really close to you, Moses, was like, just take 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 a hundred quid off. I was like, ah, oh, cool. And I bought them, and I was like, my parents were like Jack, how much you spend on these? And I was like, seven hundred. And and I was like, and they were like, bro, what? And I was like, well, no, it has you know, it has some value, and it's like yeah. you know, it's like something that they 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 don't they just no one really gets it, uh, which is just. Yeah, it's fun, man. I guess it's probably why why people love it's it. It's a as hard well. thing to explain. It's a really hard thing to explain, and it's a hard thing for others to understand as well. Actually, yeah. I completely, I do get that. I do get that. Uh, releases this year. I know we spoke about you're not really you, you deal with a lot of twenty to or fifteen to twenty year old pieces. Is there any new shoes? What's next up? Any any upcoming trends? Because obviously we've seen. Um. You know, sambas stuff like that we saw the what did, did jordan nike recently released the new fours the white and gold ones whatever they were called i don't even know how how well they how well they sold but yeah is there anything upcoming I actually like that shoe i think that's um a good everyday shoe it looks very good for summer i think it looks very good it's a bit it's kind of pure money vibes yeah that, i really uh, like it Me meg behind the camera absolutely hates the pure monies because we we buy i bought quite a few of them thinking oh these the people are gonna love this man because it's like a they they look good. They're they're white. They've got the little the metallic hits. I was like, oh, they're gonna they're gonna fly. We're gonna sell loads of them. We really don't don't really move very well for us at all. I um, guess they're more expensive, right? The yeah, and also the condi the, 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 the con I don't know when they're released, but there was no recent. Re I mean, there it might be re releasing soon, but there was no like you know they didn't they, they were a couple of years quite a few years ago now, um, and they are quite worn. A lot of the yeah. pairs we have, uh, and people were like, bro, the two the two beat. And I was like, ah. Uh, they're taking a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a yeah. hit here, but um, yeah. Well, I mean, what's it like having a store in Soho? Because your store is next to Supreme, Stussy, or like in you know in that space. You know, it's crazy. It's a good location to be in. As you said, everything is kind of surrounding us, so it's kind of nice. We're near a few good hotels, so a lot of the hotel guests will come in and buy shoes when they're on Got their you. travels. Got you. And as a result of that, we've met some some good people that I think. Have probably come from the hotel, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a great place to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is it? I mean, is it? It must be expensive, right? It's very expensive. I bet it's crazy. I can't even comprehend. It's very expensive. You got to tell me off camera how much, uh, yeah, <laughs> how much it is, because uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is meant. I mean, you probably see quite a lot of like crazy drops as well with Sabine, this Supreme and Stussy. I imagine it gets quite chaotic around there sometimes. We used to do clothing like three or four years ago, so a lot of the clothing would come over as well got you got so you we would we would then get some very nice pieces in um and then we'd also do like a lot of the older supreme as well um so yeah we did used to see a lot of cool stuff from that well um a lot of people who are watching this pod now will be will be like you know how, how do i get into reselling you know because a, a few years ago it was this massive trend to like, i even wanted to be a reseller um and everyone i think had this assumption that if you became a reseller you were kind of balling and you were you were, it was yeah. easy and you were rich and you were making loads of money it was this lavish lifestyle which obviously is not the reality maybe it's for you now but for most people it, it definitely isn't is there any advice you could give to someone who really wants to make it i would say find a niche and just stick to that niche niche and know that niche better than anyone else whether that's like i'm very fond of used shoes because i believe you can add a real value selling new shoes because you're you're cashing out someone that needs to get some capital back so you're you're valuable to them and then you're selling a used shoe for a fraction of the price of a new shoe and then that person is effectively buying the shoe they wanted for i don't know 60 percent of the price yeah or yeah what yeah have you. and i think that's a great thing to do or you focus in i don't know whether it be older shoes or a particular line of shoe I think if you focus on that then and just keep doing it that that would be my advice. Yeah, so so yeah, this it's, it's it's interesting in terms of like because I imagine it's changed quite a lot because in the last couple of years you've seen like the generic Nike dunks like Nike obviously pumped so many pandas out stuff like that. They would fly. Yeah, they People would, would get fly. hold of them, bro, and they were they were moving for you could buy them on drop day for like 90 or quid and then or whenever they could drop all the time and then they would move for 180 190 yeah it was, those were crazy times what 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 what's, what what is up next in terms of resale wise is there a silhouette now like that, that that maybe not for you guys but like anyone upcoming can can buy do you reckon what should some what should the uh, someone trying to get into resale and effectively focus on which is actually a very hard question because i have no idea i think jordan fours are still are still doing very well i think sbs are still doing very well 
There's a, I think there's a big SB release coming soon, which is the Futura. Yeah, Have you yes, seen that? Yes, yes, yes. That's a beautiful looking shoe. Um, uh, it, it, we're going to hopefully get another um, four SB collaboration soon as well, right? Which is going to be in a going to be so. the blue colorway this time, or have they not announced what color yet? I I don't know if it's the I don't know if they're either bringing back the military blue or they're doing that as the. I think they might be bringing back the military blue. I, uh, yeah, well, I don't know if they're doing it as the Jordan 4 SB. I'm not sure. But either he, way. What did he think of the 4 SB? Because that was crazy. It was so interesting. I remember you actually did a video on it. I was researching I, I thought that was actually... Because I don't, I don't really wear these types of shoes myself. But that Jordan 4, I think anything with a bit of green on it is always yeah. going to be good. But that, I just thought that shoe was so beautiful. It was very nice. Yeah, I the hit of SB on the back tab was, was really, really cool. And it was kind of a... Because obviously it was last year, like the big anniversary for SB, wasn't it? It was 50th anniversary, something like that, or 40th, something like that. But they obviously killed it last year. And having to have that, an SB collaboration with a shoe like a Jordan 4, which is so popular in the space at the yeah. moment, especially amongst like my audience, people absolutely loved it. I mean, it was a lot of people just kind of shoe of 2023. I, was like, I don't know if it was might have been voted like the shoe of the I year. That, I think it must have been. Yeah, alongside stuff like the Cortez, because that was obviously like insane. That was a great Because that was right at the start of 2023. I think a lot of people forgot about it. I actually did like a list, a tier list. It was like best shoes that released. I'm not going to lie, I was completely forgot they released early in, in, in 2023. And everyone in the comments was like, bro, you're a fucking idiot. How did you forget this shoe? I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it wasn't that. was that. a great shoe. Yeah, have you, have you got any of them? You're a big Air Max guy? I used to be once upon a time. That was effectively how... I started collecting shoes years and years and years ago. I would collect, um, I would collect TNs. Nice. Um, I never really got into 95s. I liked them, um, but I collected TNs mainly a couple of 90s and a couple of ones. But I never, TNs were my thing. I never really got into anything else. Well, what is your, what is, what is the personal collection looking like of someone who sells shoes for hundreds of thousands of pounds? I don't really, I don't really have a collection. That's crazy, man. Like, I have maybe four or five pairs of Vans, a few pairs of Crocs, right. <laughs> a couple of Uggs, <laughs> and that's that's kind of it, really. Why? 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 Why is that the case? You've I, accessed all these insane pairs. People will be shouting at the screen right now, like, bro. Yeah, I love the shoes to look at. I just feel that when I wear them, they just don't go with my aesthetic yeah okay, so i love okay. the shoes i just yeah i just i don't own any no so you never have you ever what's the most you've ever spent on like your personal pair like never nothing really that insane very normal <sighs> I, I don't really think i've spent a lot of money on a pair of really shoes. that's bro, that's i mean that's actually really interesting like really fascinating yeah that someone who does this as a livelihood i'm trying to think and there just there just isn't anything that's crazy man yeah, nothing stands out. What 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 um what sneaker trends are gonna any actual sneaker trends are gonna pop off this year? What's gonna happen with like Sambas? Uh, again, as someone who's so so into the space, what's gonna happen with it? I like Sambas. Um because obviously you've seen like the World's Bonners, stuff like that. Yeah, I think I I I think like flat bottom shoes like Vans, Sambas, Jordan One Lows. I think they've all been doing very good and I think that's gonna continue as well. Yeah. I think yeah. Adidas have been doing that very well. You can kind of wear those shoes with all outfits, right? They're a bit smarter than wearing a Yeezy. Um, they are, yeah, that's true. I feel like that kind of aesthetic's a lot more in now. Yeah. So they're a lot. So people who still want to be trendy and wear that kind of smarter aesthetic yeah. as opposed to that 2018 hype can keep their sneak interest by going with like a OG Jordan One Low or a I don't know some kind of Samba or yeah. a Gazelle, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean that that's that's a really interesting in, in, interesting philosophy that we're probably going to see a lot less. Do you think what, what about the Jordan hype? Other than like, let, let's uh, not not the low top so much, but like the fours, the ones. Is it more just collectors and people who are who are people who were on the hype before the twenty twenty hype? I think so. I think the last good Jordan one to release was maybe the Lost and Found. They're still like a very popular seller. Yeah. Uh, it's like a very traditional colorway. Um, I don't think there's been anything since. Yeah, they released back into 2022, didn't they? I think December, November 2022. Yeah. And that's that's a long time ago now, actually, when you say yeah, that's it the seems best. Wild. Best 
Jordan 1 for, uh, to, to yeah, release since then. Yeah, sounds sad, right? It is really sad, man. And they wore a great shoe. Yeah. They are, well, they are a great shoe because they obviously have like the cracking. And I think it's a really, it's good that Nike did that because it's an accessible Chicago, yeah. OG Chicago, right? So people who are the new age of sneakerheads yeah. who don't want to go and spend an insane amount of money on an 85 or something, you know, they can get a little bit of the OG and a bit of that vintage heritage through yeah. a new modern silhouette. Um, interesting question I actually missed earlier. I want to speak about the biggest profit margin you have made on a shoe, if you can uh, disclose that because we need a bit of a clickbait clip i think it's a, about ninety thousand. fuck yeah but that's insane yeah that's absolutely amazing Did you, can i can you can you tell me what shoe it is it was the paris wow okay yeah that was that was almost like a perfect storm of events um so someone brought in someone brought in a shoe they came to sell a shoe and it was the paris um Obviously, I asked them if they wanted to to sell it or they wanted to do a consignment option. Mm. And they said they were more keen to do uh, an outright sale. They wanted, what did they want? I think he wanted at the time, I think he wanted 40,000. Yeah. Which was kind of near enough what some pairs, it was, it was on the higher end of the spectrum of where some had sold for. I think realistically, the shoe probably was going to sell for like £25,000. So I gave him the option. I said, look, I believe this shoe will sell for us for 25000 I said, if you want to do a consignment option, we can do that and then we'll pay you out when it sells minus a commission. Mm. Or if we can cash you out now, it will, it'll be a lot lower. Yeah. And he was like, look, I just want cash now today. And... I actually had cash on me at the time. I was I was I was about to buy a watch on that particular day. Yeah, and I thought, oh well, I guess I'm not, <laughs> unless I'm not going to get the watch, and we I we we bought it for it was either ten or eleven thousand, and then so we, so he, he so he he wanted forty, right? He wanted forty. I said that was a bit north of what I believed it would sell for. I said I think it would sell for twenty five. So I gave him the consignment option, which would have returned him I don't know twenty three or something like this. He was like, I want cash now. So then we negotiated, got it for 10, 11,000, I think it was. And we marketed the shoe. No one really, no one really bit on the shoe. And then we ended up having it for like, th- I don't know, two or three months. And in that two or three months, you had a pair that had sold at Sotheby's for like 80,000. And I think it was a size... I think it was a size US 10. I think ours was a US 10 and a half, so it was more desirable. So then when that happened, I think everyone that had a Paris had put their pairs up in price. Yeah. So I put mine up to 130,000. But that was more as as a clickbait thing. It was more, I kind of wasn't trying to sell it because I just thought the value would keep rising. Put it at 130,000. And then a customer just walked in and, bought it to uh, the short story. Wow, so he just came in? He just came in, he bought a load of um, SBs, bought a load of SBs and asked if we had anything else crazy. This was being stored in a vault about an hour away, right? From the store. He asked so if, so that was, it was not even in your, you have to securely lock yeah, it, it was, up? Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was stored in a vault somewhere, yeah. That's mental, mate. That, so that's he, crazy. he took my number and said, have you got anything else? So he, he, he spent about... 35,000 on shoes in the store. And then he took my number and said, have you got anything else crazy in this size? I actually said, no, I completely forgot. I <laughs> said, I don't have anything else. And as he was leaving, he was getting into his taxi or whatever it was. Then I remembered. So I texted his number saying, I've got one of these. He was only in the UK. He was like a traveling tourist. I was like, I've got one of these in your size. I completely forgot. And he was like, I'll come see it tomorrow. So I went to the safe, got it, brought it in. And then he negotiated. And then I think it sold for, I think it sold for 100,000 or 101,000. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. So, 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 right, let me me go back a little bit. Bought it for 11 grand. Mm Mm-hmm. We took the guy down from 40 to 11. And then you moved it for 100. And you sat on it for you did you didn't just move it instantly. It was sat for. It was about I think it was about two or three months. And in that time, the, the value went up a little bit. Yeah, it, 
it wasn't it wasn't that value when we bought it. It was just there was I can't remember what happened. I think there was Sotheby sold a pair. I think someone might have been seen wearing a pair. Okay, okay. And there was a bit of bit of hype there. There was a bit of hype. I yeah. think Travis had just been seen wearing his. Um, and then yeah, the value just kind of was just increasing over those t- over those months. That's insane, man. So what 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 is the what, what, where's the where's the market on the Paris Dunks now? Because obviously they are one of the when people talk about like grails, a lot of people that is a lot yeah. of people's grails because it's such a crazy shoe. I think they've come down a little bit, mm. which is crazy because I think a lot of other things have gone up. But I think just with where the market is and I think people not having the same money they did once upon a time, I think they've come down a bit now a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But again, it isn't a... Have those higher end pairs dropped in value because of the, like, I guess like the, the UK anyway, like everyone, no one has any money. Has, has it impacted those people who can afford those premium pairs or not really? No, I don't think so. Because I, I imagine someone who can go and splash, I don't know, X amount of money on the Freddies or, or I don't know, like the Parises for or whatever, I imagine would still be balling. They, they're not going to be like a, your yeah, everyday guy. Agree. Which is actually insane when you think about that amount of money for 90 grand's insane yeah. i'm very very jealous i mean we're gonna have to have a private conversation <laughs> off camera i need some tips tips and tricks uh, any any other insane or crazy interesting stories where customers have came in or or you've delivered to customers where they spent like big big racks any any stories that catch your eye because you you go everywhere to drop stuff off to your private clients yeah which is really fascinating and again i'm very jealous because that's i would love to get to that point where i can just dart around and do a bit of traveling someone hits me up and i'm like um i went to th- this wasn't even a shoe this was a watch i went to dubai to drop off a watch just before christmas which was just over a quarter of a million wow yeah fuck bro i'm in the wrong business i i i, I had a period i came into not came into money but like I was at uni and then started doing TikTok and stuff and I got a little bit more money, yeah. right? And we had a couple of recently sold a bit of a business and so I have a bit more money now than I did and I have been looking at watches and I'm, I'm never, I've got really tiny wrists, right? So I've always been really paranoid about watches. I actually bought the the Tissot Tiffany Blue, right? I have that as well. Because I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, I've got to get into watches very gradually. I'm not going to be an idiot and spend 10 yeah. grey on an entry level Rolex because I don't know if I'm even going to like it, right? Um, and watch games, a bit like shoes, a bit more extreme, very, very extreme. Yeah. Um, anyway, I bought that and it just, bro, it's so big on me. Mm. So I was like, bro, I'm not going to, I'm going to get bullied on the line if I wear a ladies' watch as well. So I was like, I don't know what to do. But talk about, let's just talk about watches a little bit. They are, I guess, there is some very similarities to, to sneakers. Uh, in more modern times, for sure. I think it's very similar. There's like all the watches I have, I bought like 10, 15, 20 years ago. Okay, okay. And I think there's a lot of watches now that are going for for good money, but they're all the they're all the modern ones. There's no there's no kind of rarity of any of these newer watches. Yeah. Whereas you can get older watches, which Obviously, they're not making those ones anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I think those ones are better. There's no, apart from this one I'm wearing, there's no real modern watches that that interest me. Yeah, okay. Interesting, interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was looking at, um, I was going to get, I was good, I was going to get like a tank watch because. I think they're beautiful. Yeah, my wrist is small and it would just look better than like a bigger, yeah. than, than a bigger face. But yeah, what what if someone who is going to get into watches entry level? What should they buy, man? Like, what's a good? I don't I don't want to buy a watch for or like what should I buy? I don't want to buy a watch that's like just for an investment. I do want to wear it, but I also don't want to buy one that's going to lose value incredibly, like fast. You know? I think you couldn't go wrong with a Rolex Daytona, ideally steel, um, or a GMT or a sub. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those watches. I I signed up to. Um, I don't know who it was, but you know, if you get on a weight, you on yeah. way more than I do. But again, when I was trying to get a Rolex like a year ago, I was, uh, I was like, I just sign up. I just, I, they just hit me up, and I just, they just Goldsmiths will just sort me out. And 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 you know, I couldn't even get on the, I couldn't get on a waiting list for a sub or yeah. anything like that. And obviously, to to a normal person who, who's into watches, they'd be like, obviously. But for me, who doesn't really get, who hasn't had much experience in watches, I was like, bro, this is this is crazy. This is like trying to buy like a Birkin bag or something yeah. like. I don't think you flexed your clout though when you went in, did you? No, not yeah. at all. Not I think at that all. would pro- probably change things. Do you reckon if I went in there and said I have X amount of? Not I think I'm, so personally. Yeah. 
I don't know. Anyway, I got I, I could get I could have got onto the um, wait list for like a, an explorer, a new explorer. But I, so I think they're really nice. They are nice, but I was like, I don't really know anything about it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what 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 is the what what am I doing here type thing? So, but yeah, I, I've had some had some advice since, but I'm um, still not not set on anything. What, what's the what's the game with the with your with your watch reselling? Is that is that something you do quite a lot, or is it just a no, casual? I wouldn't, thing? Ever, I wouldn't ever say any watches I've ever bought. I've just kept for my personal collection. This was the deal I did before Christmas. Was a particular client. Um, I got a load of shoes for them, and then they were. They asked me to get them the Travis AP. Yeah. Which... That released uh, end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we had kind of... I'd kind of lined up the deal. And then it fell through with the person I was buying it from. And then they had kind of... Or the person I was giving it to had realized they wanted to watch more than that, which was which was a very similar watch. Um, and then they took that... I a friend of mine had the watch so i sold it to them yeah that's crazy yeah so i would have loved the travis ap to sell that yeah what was the talk to me about that because i don't know anything about that what was the market on that there was so i think it was i think it had a retail price of two hundred thousand dollars yeah there was 200 of them 200 of them made mm. and they were going for i don't know double that four hundred thousand dollars that's insane yeah, yeah. that's insane if, if, what's the biggest markup you made on your, one of your watches uh, well, I've never, I've never sold any of mine. Never at all. Never. So it's always just kind of been sourcing and yeah. I've, like, only, done, I've only done a couple when someone's bought shoes and they said to me, "Oh, can you get I me see, one of these?" I see. I yeah. see. So it's almost just like kind of passing yeah. comments in 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 private. So for a normal person, it is not normal to have this amount of network and access. So how, how have you built this like insane network to the point where someone can hit you up? Or you That's just know question. all these amazing so that, private that has clients. All directly come from the store because from of the people location, coming in, and then there's been a few things which I've developed from TikTok. So people saying, "I've seen you there. Can you help me get this, okay, this, and this?" Okay, okay. So it's a mixture of the store and TikTok. Has that been quite recent for you then? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Really, since so like the middle of last year. Really. Yeah. So it's all of a sudden. Well, not all of a sudden, but I imagine quite quickly become. A... Yeah, it happened quite quickly last year. Yeah, and then and then. Uh, go, going back even further, how did you actually get into this? Because like you said, you've had watches for a while. Uh, moving, How long have you been moving shoes for and stuff like that and like collecting that type okay, of stuff? so that's a good question. I've probably when done was, this in the completely wrong order, but we can, uh, we can work with it. So I, I always had a thing for shoes, TNs. When I was say 14, 15, 16, I was always wearing TNs. Any money I was making, I was buying TNs. And then there was a... I don't even know how I can politically say this correctly. There was a group of lads from my area. I don't know if they were dodgy or not. I don't know what they did, but they would always see my shoes because I would, back then the colorways were more region specific. Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. So like TNs yeah. back then, you'd only get like an, um, a pair that only released in America. Yes. And then I would come up to London, Shepherd's Bush and get these TNs and wear them. And these people would but ask me- I haven't me, seen them and stuff. Yeah, yeah and then these yeah, people would yeah. say, I want these shoes. So then I would- I was only 16 at the time. I would get the money from them up front. I would say, well, listen, if you want this pair, it's going to cost you X, Y, Z. Um, you've got to pay me in advance because I've got to go get the shoes. I don't want to be... I, d I didn't have any money at that point. So then I would I'd go to London once a week, buy, get an order of shoes and then bring them back and then give them to everyone that had paid me for them. So that was when it started. It was like 23 years ago. Wow. And then, and then what did you do? What, what, have you always done this kind of... Because it's not, you, you know, it's not a traditional job, is it really? It's no nine to five. Even though you have a store, it definitely isn't a... I did that for a while. And then I don't know if I fell out of love with it, but I kind of went out and got a proper job. Yeah. I worked in advertising for a while. And then I wasn't really, wasn't really buying shoes, or anything. And then obviously this, the store that came about was by accident. I, I, I created an app, which was called Proxied originally. Yeah. And the app was, for the new releases, when people are lining up at Supreme to mm. buy them, you could go on the app and secure an item from someone that was about to, about to buy the item. Yeah, 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 And you yeah. could drop it off 
at that store, which was almost like a drop-off location. That's sick, yeah. So it was like StockX, but being able to get the item on the same day. On the day. same day. And yeah. it was, I bet that was a lot of like Supreme and stuff like that. A right? lot of Supreme, a lot of Palace, and a lot of shoes. Um, but then the app ran into problems. And then because I had the unit there, I was like, "There's the, the unit's paid for. There's no point in shutting it down. So a few friends had said, look, let me stick a shoe on the wall. If it sells, you just take a little cut. And then, so the app was running into problems and the shoes started selling. So that's kind of how, this, how the store was so built. So yeah, really. you've done, done, done quite a lot. What makes a solid shoe collection? What should people be doing to boost it out, make a good one? Um, so I think the, the first thing would always be to just buy things you like. Yeah. People say that about watches, right? There's, there's probably no point in buying things that you don't like mm. because I guess you're going to have no desire to keep it now if you're keeping shoes for the for the long run that's when they start going up in value right yes yeah um, so i think the first thing to do is buy things you like um make them like very sort of classic shoes like mm. an sb or jordan one um and yeah and buy things you like yeah i think that's 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 that people always ask me that question they yeah. always ask me and I always say, bro, just buy whatever you want, man. Yeah. It doesn't help at all. It doesn't help. That's not what they're looking for, answer wise. But that is the truth. Yeah. Because then what, what happens is you then you go into learning more about what, yeah. you, what you actually do like. Because what you buy initially is never going to be what you end up loving. Yeah. The likelihood of that is very, very, very unlikely. I mean, like, you know, I started off buying like, buying loads of Yeezys because yeah. it was what was trending at the time. And I loved that the way it dropped and it was just so crazy and it was such a fun time, such a fun community. And now obviously I would, I still have a, quite a few pairs but um don't really wear them on a daily at all i think you know my my yeah. stars mature quite a lot but i think that's right wear what you want people that's the that's yeah. the, the big takeaway from it i don't think anyone well I, I didn't certainly i didn't think the cortese 95s were going to go as crazy as they did yeah 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 um but me not even particularly i do like 95s so i wouldn't wear a pair mm. but the cortese 95s I even contemplated, I, w I wanted a pair, but then it, it didn't really go with anything I was wearing. So I, I never ended up getting a pair, but that like dark blue and pink one is. Yeah, the pink, the pink beam, the pink beams, the black Yeah, and I pink think that's ones. one of the best shoes. They're amazing. The, the pink elbow was really that's cool. An, that's an amazing. Yeah, really, and the really value cool. of those now, people were picking them up for two, three hundred pounds. And now they're, I don't know. They're still like four, 500, man. They're just, uh, and they're, they move the bigger size. I mean, if you're trying to buy a pair in a 10, 11, it's oh, hard. it's crazy. Really, really hard. Well, uh, is, is there anything uh, as, as a reseller that you, you kind of haven't sold, but you really want to try and sell? Like just would be, would be a bit of an accomplishment to sell to someone. Yes and no. The shoe that I really wanted to sell, I sold, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Yeah. So I would like to get another one of those that I and can- And document a little bit. I can document. Yeah. Um, I've never, I've never had any sort of original 85s unworn with, with everything. How, how many of them would be on the market though? Like completely dead, like completely dead. So that there can't be too many. pairs do pop up occasionally. Mm. Um, They'd be going for for a good pretty penny. Yeah, and in bigger sizes, they're obviously a lot more. I'd love or um, or a signed Jordan one. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. That's probably one thing I would contemplate having in my collection. Yeah. Okay. I would like to have one of those. Yeah, that would be cool. Well, a signed one would be would be very pretty on the wall. I would love a signed one of those. Yeah, that would be sick. That would be sick. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I would love to sell something like that. Something a bit more collectible. Yeah. Well, I mean, shoes are collectible in general, but I mean, so that that signature gives it a that artistic feel. Um, I'd love to have one of those. That's cool. That's interesting. Uh, is there much in your collection space, uh, like in terms of shoes, fashion, and kind of who do you look up to in terms of motivation? I know you said you haven't got the biggest uh, shoe collection, but you're obviously a big Chrome Hearts guy, fashion wise. I mean, wise. that's a completely different world. That's a world that I'll never, I'll never even touch the sides of. Right? There's people that have got that's insane, mate. Like one of one pieces, the yeah. jewelry, um, and yeah, that's that, that's a whole other episode, bro. Because uh, yeah, that's a, a, that's a, a wild world. That is a, that is a crazy world. Um, in terms of shoe collectors. There's a few guys over in America that probably probably do what I do, but but better and on a bigger scale, um, which I love what they do. I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to 
give away my sources. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there, there's a few people. I mean, even Dennis, who you had on the other week, I love what Dennis does. He's a cool guy, really cool guy. Um, he's been doing this a little while as well. So there, there's a few people that do this very, very well. And yeah. I kind of, I like what all of them do because everyone does something slightly different. Yeah, right? I feel, it feels amazing, man, because I meet so many people who are like, like yourself, who are like, big resellers if you like with big private clients big yeah. money big big like people wanting to buy off them and there's never any like it's just really chill yeah i don't sell to any of those clients so it's probably completely different but like with what with what kicks force do is it's very it's probably quite different but everyone's always helping each other out always yeah. offering advice there's like, another there's another sorry to interrupt you there's another guy as well called jimmy i don't know if you've heard of jimmy yeah, shoes J jimmy jimmy the older guy right yeah. yeah he came to my house um and i obviously it's just the first time i met him and he doesn't know who i am but he came to my house to pick up a supreme director's chair yeah back in uh for, for a sneaker i think it was a sneaker con um and he bought it off me um and he was so cool man one of the cool one of the nicest guys i've ever had like a 10 minute conversation with he's an amazing guy we've done a lot of business together and then we kind of me and him normally meet up once a week we have a, a sandwich and a coffee cool. and we just he helps me out with stuff um but yeah, yeah he, he was nice well. man i love, he what, was I love nice. what he does as well yeah he's a top 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 guy um to finish off is there anything else you would venture in because you're you've, you've done so much what what's next what, my, what are you going to move next what are you going to resell next uh, my real passion is in advertising so I think I think my next venture will be something advertising related. Okay, okay. So away from well, it could still be shoes, but I think away it from it will still be tied in with tied in with shoes. Yeah. Or or fashion in general yeah. and UK culture, but it will be, I suppose, advertising focused. Okay. Interesting. That's what I really like. I'm very mm. I'm very fond of what TikTok has done for people in this industry, right? You've people have been able to um I guess get exposure that they would never have ordinarily yeah, mate, been able to get. I mean, it's literally like, yeah, like myself's a perfect perfect yeah. example. It's a like game changer, man. Complete game and just, changer. And just because of their algorithm, right? If you're producing good content in a certain niche and regularly, TikTok will give you that exposure and push you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You're getting seen by the right people. You don't need to do hashtags. You don't need to do none of that. They're very just, smart because it picks smart. up on the dialogue and yeah. as opposed to like just the title and stuff like that. But um, sir, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. We'll Thank you so to, much uh, for having me. We'll have to have a few conversations afterwards because I'm sure you can give me a couple of bits of advice um, on, on a few things. But Ryan, man, thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Um, check out, make sure to check out Ryan's socials, London Sneaker Club. Um, check them out in Soho. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, give the little heart a like. And if you're on YouTube, like subscribe all that good stuff and yeah thank you and we'll see you in the next episode